Hi everyone, so in this second video about the black body radiation, I want to continue the discussion and ask this uh, question, which is why is black body radiation important, specifically in this case in the context of the development of uh, the quantum theory of uh, matter, okay? So, you know, to understand that, we have to again understand the idea of black body radiation, which is that, you know, you have a system at a higher temperature right the system that's been receiving energy and remember that that could be either your iron that's somehow being heated uh, or your um, you know uh, stovetop metals that's been receiving electrical energy or your uh, tungsten wire that's again same thing getting electrical energy um, all of those system will eventually reach a, a temperature that's higher than the uh, the temperature in the surroundings okay so when the temperature is high that system that is at the higher temperature will uh, release that energy, right? Because they need to reach uh, thermal equilibrium. This is a, a, a type of uh, situation we discuss in uh, topic six when we talk about, uh, you know, transfer of energy through heat. We say that there is there is always a uh, transfer of energy from a higher temperature to a lower temperature system. Um, until they reach thermal equilibrium. So this is the same way. You have an object that is somehow uh, at a higher temperature. They want to really that object wants to uh, transfer that excess energy. Now, in chapter six or in topic six, when we talk about these type of systems, we're we're primarily talking about things that are both uh, consist of matter. So in other words, in one case, you might have a coffee cup transferring uh, its, you know, the coffee in the coffee cup, which is at a higher temperature, transferring its energy to air uh, around the air particles get higher, you know, uh, uh, get that excess energy. And then the coffee particles and the water in the coffee loses that energy. Uh, so eventually they reach thermal equilibrium. Now, both the water and the air, they consist of particles. So those are both matter, right? They're both systems of matter okay things that have mass and have a certain velocity but you can also have this transfer of energy in terms of matter uh, to light and that's really what's going on with black body radiation you have something that's being heated okay which is matter in this case so like the thung uh, tungsten wire for example consists of tungsten atoms inside tungsten atoms you have the electrons and the electrons start to, you know, have this very high temperature uh, and they start to move uh, at a very high, uh, they start to oscillate. That's the term we use to, to refer to the uh, motion of these electrons. They start to oscillate uh, at higher and higher frequency, okay? And at some point they have to release that energy and that energy is released in the form of light and that's the light that we see uh, with this object. Okay, uh, that's the light that I was talking about in the previous video as well. Now, the light that's emitted by the object, of course, is what we're interested in. We can also say that the object glows, right? So when you look at this, you say, well, there's a glow here. The glow is this orange glow. This is a yellowish glow and so on. Okay, so that's the light that's being emitted by the hot object. Now, the wavelength of this light depends on the temperature of the object. Uh, as uh, I've discussed in the previous video as well. So if you have something that's um, hotter, right, the, um, you know, the, the, the color of the light that's being emitted would be a certain color. If it's uh, not as hot, okay, then it will be a different color. So in fact, every object does this, okay. Um, any object that has a certain temperature actually is emitting light. Uh, so if we go back to Later, we'll go back to this uh, example about about uh, humans. I'll just mention it here before I talk about this plot later on. The human body is actually is some you can model it as a black body because really it's you know we're emitting heat right. We're at a certain temperature, 37 degrees Celsius, if you're healthy, and you're emitting uh, light uh, even though you don't know it. Okay, now you're emitting this light, but the light. Uh, it's not something that we can observe through, uh, it's not in a visible region, in other words. It's not something that our eyes can see. But as you know, there, uh, uh, for, for those of you who have, have you know, maybe been told this before or learned it somehow, that the light that the human body uh, emits is in the infrared range, okay? So you're able to use this infrared goggles or glasses to actually, uh, you know, look at, 
you know humans in the in the dark right when all lights are turned off because human bodies uh, generate heat or generate uh, I should say generate light and the light is in the infrared range so if you're using appropriate uh, instrument like the infrared goggles or glasses you're able to look at humans in the dark uh, and really because that in those instruments are set specifically to detect emission or light in the infrared range but we're we're not hot enough okay to uh, emit light in the visible range because the visible range actually is a higher energy range so our body is not so hot that we actually radiate in the visible range now however if you think about the Sun the Sun is very bright when you look at it you know it might look like white right now the Sun is very hot so it's actually radiating energy in the visible range and we can actually see it we can actually see that the Sun has a certain color associated with it but humans we don't uh, because you know again the emission uh, is not in the uh, in the visible range okay let's go back to this slide um, I just want to point out that the wavelength uh, that's being emitted is what's interesting in this particular case because if we know the wavelength that's being emitted by the light or the wavelength range we can then calculate the temperature of the object because the temperature of the object is um, related to the wavelength that's being emitted uh, by that object okay hotter object results in lower wavelength uh, so as a result you're gonna have a different color when you have a hot object versus a colder object um, when we study this uh, black body radiation we study them in terms of how much energy is being emitted in other words usually the intensity of the light that's being emitted as a function of the wavelength that's being emitted okay and as, as I mentioned here earlier as well I'm gonna restate it here if you understand how this works it's very important because it allows you to you know make certain prediction about you know light bulbs right stoves um, you can calculate temperature of the Sun in fact average temperature of the Sun even though we've never been there we can make that calculation based on the light that's being um, uh, you know light that's being emitted by the Sun you can then also make instruments like those infrared goggles or glasses because we know that you know the human bodies emit this light so we can uh, make an instrument that could detect those uh, emission okay so the, it's, it's actually a fairly important uh, concept and has a lot of practical uh, application as well now as far as the physics of 1900 the interest at the time was mainly on light bulbs because if you remember this was the time when light bulbs you know the type that I was showing you in the previous picture this type of light bulbs were just invented uh, so people were uh, you know have some interest in understanding how these things work okay now let's go back to the plot here that I was showing okay so what it, the black body radiation as I said just now is that you usually plotting this in terms of the amount of energy that's being generated total amount of energy which is referred to as the intensity of the light which is how bright the light is okay versus the wavelength and for different temperatures you usually have a certain type of uh, you know for different temperature object here so you can see that this is kind of the cooler object at 3000 Kelvin this is the hotter object at 6000 Kelvin at 3000 Kelvin you have this plot that's at the longer wavelength right you can see this longer wavelength and then at the 6000 Kelvin which is the hotter object you're at a shorter wavelength okay and you can also see that the uh, energy that's being generated which is the in corresponds to the intensity of the light has a lot more energy for this curve because you can see that it's the area under the curve corresponds to the amount of energy that's being generated so there's a lot more energy in this in this uh, part of the uh, curve than this red one right here okay now one of the things that's important about black body radiation was that this was the actual experimental observation so people measure this black body radiation and they notice that there's always a peak uh, there's always a peak in terms of wavelength uh, at a given temperature so at 6000 Kelvin there's a peak around let's say 500 uh, nanometers and then there at 3000 Kelvin there's a little bit of a peak around you know let's say 900 or a thousand um, uh, nanometers okay now the, the the interesting thing about this and the fact that we needed quantum mechanics or something new to explain this black body radiation was because here you see this plot that's given as a bunch of dots here 
That was what the classical prediction was for black body radiation. In other words, uh, there's two people who made this prediction, worked together to make this prediction. They're both very well-known, respected physicists uh, at the time. Their name is Ray, uh, Rayleigh and Jeans. And they um, derived an equation based on classical mechanics. And their equation predicted that the intensity of the... Um, of the radiation will be proportional to the square of the frequency and what that means is that as you go to lower and lower frequency remember that wavelength and frequency are inversely related so as you go to lower wavelength you go to higher frequency so what they're predicting is that at lower frequency I mean at higher frequency the intensity of the light will just go all the way to the top here so this is like a hyperbola in other words it just keeps going and going and going up to the top so in other words what they're predicting is there's a lot of UV radiation, very intense UV radiation, uh, as a result of black body radiation. Uh, and of course, that's not what was observed. What was observed was something like this. In fact, this idea, the, the, the prediction that they made, is often called the UV ultraviolet catastrophe because there's so you know the prediction was that there's so much UV or high energy radiation that everybody's going to basically die of it but of course that's not true we didn't observe that okay so then the question was then well how do we explain these curves because these are what we observe but this is what was predicted by the most advanced physics at the time okay at the 1900